talking about unruly, talking about young people that perhaps uh, uh, needed to know what side their bread was buttered on, I think we can include Harry and Meghan in that. And someone who would definitely put them in their place if given the chance is Kinsey Schofield, the royal commentator, founder of To Die For Daily, co-host of The Majesty podcast. Morning to you, Kinsey Schofield. There's no way I would put them in their place. I'm terrified of those two. There's, they live on a completely different planet than we do, Christo. But do you think that, that we speak a lot, actually, about probably Harry more than Meghan, because Meghan is clearly the smarter one out of the two of them. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, the, the bar is quite low. But Harry, we, we speak a lot about self-awareness when it comes to Harry and not really appreciating perhaps how amazingly privileged his life was um, because he was just sort of allowed to get on with things. And, I mean, to him, uh, hardship was sort of not getting quite so long in Botswana to go and find himself. Um, do you think that he lacked boundaries and discipline in his youth? I'm sure he did. I mean, I don't even think we ever hear about Princess Diana um, rep reprimanding them. I think, you know, there are those videos that I secretly love of Harry sticking his tongue out the window at paparazzi and photographers and Diana cackling in the background. So I do think he probably lacked di discipline. I'm sure he had structure based on the schools he went to and just the royal way. But um, it does seem like he got away with a lot because the queen was smitten with him, thought he was precious and funny. And the king just, you know, was a busy man. He made a, he created a position for the Prince of Wales. There wasn't really one before him. Oh, you see, this, you know what this leads me to worry about now? I know you're going to say Louis. Don't be a hater. I'm not being a hater. I just think that... I love Louis. Louis is perfect. I love Louis, but I see him going the same way. He is indulged. Young Prince Louis' naughty behaviour is indulged because we all That's roll our true. eyes and we say that it's cute when in actual fact we did the same with Harry and Harry no. wasn't given the boundaries he needed and look at how he's turned out, a self-indulgent moaning mini. No, Catherine specifically scolds him in public. We've seen Catherine scold him in public. We've seen Catherine scold Princess Charlotte in public as well, when she stuck her tongue out at, uh, at a sporting event, I believe. So we do see Catherine actually physically reprimand her children. Um, but we in the States on Saturday had the most scathing headline from the Wall Street Journal, which is a very respected business, you know, um, like go to it's the bible for some people especially on the east coast the headline is harry and megan produce a hollywood flop themselves <gasps> i mean it is quite true though isn't it why has the commercial bubble burst for harry and megan do you think well i mean it, this article goes into a list of their failures and some of them I'd never even heard before. Several of the projects that they pitched to Netflix that Netflix did not give the green light on weren't original ideas, Christo. They literally just pitched existing concepts that were successful at Netflix, but with a different tone. For instance, they pitched an Emily in Paris show, but with a male lead. And then they pitched a family-friendly sitcom about a gay character, but Netflix said it was too similar to their hit, an existing hit, called Heartstopper. So again, no original ideas. There is one idea in the works um, titled Bad Manners, and this is based on Miss Haversham of Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. And let me read you the description. The prequel would recast the lonely spinster as a strong woman living in, in um, a patriarchal society. Netflix has not given this project the green light, but um, that's the only thing, aside from Heart of Evict Evictus, that's still kind of hanging in the balance. So thereby completely changing the character and the context of Miss Haversham, so it's nothing to do with it. Right, yeah. So, um, you know, we're getting a, a few more kind of peeks behind the curtain as to what went wrong, and I think it's just that their ideas were...
like it's 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 quite staggering. We speak on the podcast this week actually about um, some of what Harry was pitching to Spotify when he was having meetings with execs in Spotify, and like one of his ideas was a sit down with Putin and Zelensky. Well, not together, but he wanted to interview leaders like Zelensky, like Putin, like Trump about their upbringing and their childhood, because apparently, I mean, he is just so fixated on feeling like he got the short end of the stick as a child. You you know, you talk about privilege. He, he just is kind of fixated on that time in his life, clearly. Um, but specifically with Trump, he and Meghan blew Trump off when he visited the Queen in the UK. And um, I doubt that Putin would want to have anything to do with him. I, I just I, I just don't think that these are realistic ideas. He wanted to talk to the Pope about religion, uh, which is I think we all do. That would all be that would all be a great cocktail hour. But I don't think that that's a realistic also, opportunity. Like, how long did it take them to think, right, we're going to interview the Pope. What should we interview the Pope about? Um, oh, religion. Oh, that's yeah. a brilliant idea. Can you imagine that pitch meeting? What a brilliant idea. Religion and the Pope. OK, Trump. What should we talk to Trump about? Um, business. How about business? Business. Business and Trump. Oh, my word. Amazing. Right, Zelensky. What should we talk to Zelensky about? Uh, uh, Ukraine. Let's talk to Zelensky about, about Maybe, Ukraine. We could, talk, we could talk to Zelensky about acting, because Zelensky used to be an actor like his wife. But um, um, That's true. Uh, he, he, um, he, he won Dancing with the Stars in Ukraine. Did you know I, that? They, I didn't know that. Yeah, that, he is, did. that is he did. I, I, that's breaking news to me. They also said that the road to launching archetypes was really rocky and that Megan would often ask for changes late in the editing process. And you and I talked about this at the time. We were hearing some of these stories while archetypes was slowly being released. That Megan was trying to make some of these last minute edits, especially after the Queen passed. Um and she was recruiting senior Spotify executives, including then Chief Content Officer Don Osruff, to call producers on Megan's behalf and push them to make those changes. So Megan was calling people above the, you know, like uh, at the very, very top, trying to ensure that she got her way. Um, but also, they, you know, they, they don't want to hear from her about edits. You know, th 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 what, why? That, that's, that's, that would be like me ringing Rupert Murdoch and saying, um, oh, listen, um, Tom didn't... Can you, can you ask Tom to get the tweet out, please, Rupert? Do you mind? Um, I would, it, we would never tell on Tom. We love Tom. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't be to tell on Tom, just just to pass on the message. Just, just to, can you pass it on, please? And the immediate thing... Well, firstly, I'm sure I'd get a barrage of swearing. But secondly, I'm sure the first question would be... Uh, well, who are you? Just call him yourself. Yeah, 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 who are you? Who on earth are you? What are, what are you doing? How have you got my number? Um, I'm blocking you immediately. And then the third question would be, well, why didn't you just call Tom and ask yourself? Why can't you just call and ask for those edits to be made herself? Well, she was, but when things weren't happening fast enough for her, she was calling the people at the top to ensure that she got her way. They must um, be they, sick they, to death. Listen, listen, we'll hear some more about some of their, their uh, ideas. I mean, I don't know whether I've just insulted anyone who's ever had an idea by, by using them in the same breath. Uh, we'll also uh, talk about the person that they asked to come on the uh, Archetypes podcast who <laughs> very politely refused and uh, a lot more as well. Still joined live on the line by the Royal commentator Kinsey Schofield. Uh, Kinsey, what else were you going to tell us about some of the Sussex's uh, commercial failures? Uh, Harry was trying to develop a podcast about veterans, which I thought was a really great direction. However, he just couldn't come up with the template, how that would sound, uh, what that would it, be. You'd call it Harry's Heroes. You would do Ooh. inspirational stories of people that had uh, overcome adversity as a result of their service in the military and how they've put that adversity to good use. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, it's, it's, so it's an absolute no-brainer. There it is, right there. So that's disappointing. I mean, they say that Spotify was really disappointed that they didn't get anything from Harry. And we had this discussion last week when I said... You know, we heard that they were going to both be creating content for Spotify. We got one Christmas special with Harry, and then we got uh, Megan's Archetypes, which 
did not seem to impress them. And speaking of archetypes, Megan had pursued an interview with Taylor Swift by writing her a handwritten note asking her to please be on the podcast. And Taylor didn't even bother to respond with a handwritten note. Taylor had her representatives respond saying that she was not available. I mean, that is a snub, right? I feel like we now know why Maddie and T Taylor didn't work out because Denise is Megan's number one fan. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is true. Because, of course, Matty Healy from the 1975, who was seeing Taylor Swift, his mother is Denise Welsh, who uh, is, of course, the loose Has woman. appeared on this programme with Chris Doe. appeared on this programme. I actually got on really well with her, though we disagree massively on Megan because she is a staunch defender of Megan and clearly Taylor Swift doesn't adore Megan that much. Uh, who isn't well, wasn't she snubbed by Michelle Obama in some way as well, uh, Meghan Markle? Because the, the Obamas loved the Queen and actually really love the royal family, the late Queen, I should say, and, and really loved the, the, the royal family. There, were, there are a couple of different stories that are circulating, nothing in relation to the Archetypes podcast, but there is a story, I believe it's in Tom Bauer's book, about Meghan showing up, surprising Michelle Obama at a book signing and trying to see her backstage and being denied. And then when they did the Oprah sit down, I think Michelle was initially surprised by a question about the Oprah Winfrey interview and sided with Meghan. And then act after she actually had time to see the interview, she said it was quite sad and that family should be number one. So she kind of backtracked once she had time to see and digest everything. Um, but, you know, I'd also heard that Reese Witherspoon had turned her down for an interview for season one of Archetypes. And no, 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 just the season of Archetypes. It's all season yeah. one now. It's just, just the season of Archetypes. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, I, I do think that she had much bigger plans for the show than she actually got to... You've got to, you got to admire Megan, though, because she picks herself back up she dusts herself off and she just tries someone else. She, just, she, she just calls keeps... Paris Hilton. She calls Paris Hilton and Paris Hilton's like, oh, definitely. She just keeps ploughing on. And if Paris Hilton had said no, she'd have found someone else. And if Mariah Carey had said no, she'd have found someone else. She, whether you love her or loathe her, you've got to Hustler. admire. She's a, she's, a, she's a grafting grifter. She grafts, she, she grifts. She's a hustler. I've always said that. I've always said she's self-made, and I admire that about her. Yeah, I, I admire that about her. I don't particularly think that she comes across as particularly kind, but you have to admire the work ethic and the, um, yeah, the hustling. Absolutely. The hustling. Uh, yeah, I, I, think I think work ethic is taking it a step too far because, like we've said, they made millions of dollars, without a doubt. I don't. They did not receive all of the... They, you know, contract that was initially reported because they they did not meet their contractual obligations. They only delivered 13 hours of content and uh, one, technically one series. So I wouldn't say work ethic, but I certainly think she's a creative, she's creative and she's fearless and almost, I guess, I honestly think the word shameless is probably more appropriate. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, any anything else from the uh, the Hollywood duo? I think that that's all I've got. I think that that is all I've got. It's a great Wall Street Journal article. I um, I'm a, still one of those people that shares a Netflix account with my family. So Daddy had to take pictures of the Wall Street Journal article for me so that I could actually read it. And when I say Daddy, I mean my literally like DNA, my DNA dad. Oh, not um, any other kind of Daddy. No, no. Uh, and Netflix as well. It, 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 while we're on the subject, actually, and you mentioned Netflix, it doesn't look like they're going to renew anything. I mean, because, of course, you, you mentioned the shows that they were pitching, but, of course, they did their documentary, their Woe is Me Fest and how terrible their life is. And they don't want another series of that either. They would love another series of that, but Harry and Meghan aren't willing to do that. That's why they're pitching them these ideas, and it's interesting to me that there's, they're pitching them these ideas of things that Netflix has already done, so much so that you're just, like, swapping out one, you know, a female character for a male character, and um, they would love 
they would love another that that was the most successful documentary for that year that it was released without a doubt there's no proof of return on investment you know there's no proof that x amount of people signed up for netflix just to see that documentary so that's it's hard to prove that there there is a return on investment but they can say statistically that that was a success for them streaming wise but then they delivered the um documentary that we had talked about uh that was the foundation who is we just talked about this on our podcast and you were joking about them dancing in the streets oh i was that the not the invictus one no that's that's the they did a oh well, we're talking about the, the south africa one no there was because we were mentioned nelson mandela on the podcast didn't we as well yes yes it's the nelson mandela foundation that's they, the one they had an existing they had existing footage of leaders harry and megan narrated it and gave that to netflix but that content already existed and so it's going to be the documentary the nelson mandela documentary which did docuseries which did not was not considered a success it didn't even crack the top 10 and then heart of evictus and i'm curious to see how heart of evictus does but it does seem like their contract expires in 2020 2025 unless they provide some really unique ideas or say yeah yeah we'll go we'll read megan's diary live we'll read megan's diary they that will, she I'm, I'm telling you now in order to get payday, they'll do another documentary. Once Netflix say, like, we don't want any of this toot that you're actually pitching us, they'll end up doing another woe fest. They will. Well, because that's well, the only way they're going to get paid. And so they will true. end up doing something. And you're right, it will be probably based on Megan's diaries or something along those lines. Sean in Gloucester says, the problem Harry and Megan have is that they are a one-trick pony, and the trick they have is rubbish anyway says Sean okay let's talk about King Charles yeah let's I, I just wanted to end on something happy I don't know I'm sure you saw these pictures earlier this week but you know King Charles crying moved to tears because the horse bred by his mother won at Royal Ascot I mean I'm sure he would have loved to have his seen his mother's reaction to this um, it was his first win, obviously. I think it's the first win for in a long time for the royal family. And I talked to, um, yeah, because I, I talked to Rupert Bell not too long ago about Royal Ascot. And, and he, I said I was concerned that this was no longer going to be an important event for the royal family or horse racing. The equestrian sport was has really going to lose a lot with the death of the queen. But seeing Charles cry like this, seeing how excited Camilla was, how cute Catherine, the Princess of Wales was, she really got into the spirit with Sophie, giving her a thumbs up, you know, seeing Zara. I, it was such a relief. And it was almost like they were there honoring the queen honoring her love for the sport and well, it was well, queen, a really queen camilla thing. loves horse racing yes. she loves the ggs she really does and that was one of the things she had in common with the late uh, queen elizabeth that, that that's actually uh, i think one of the reasons she managed to break through uh, was yeah. was was based on that because the late queen loved anyone horsey um <laughs> really and so 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 does princess anne they're, they're a very horsey family and uh, so uh, I think that it is definitely secured in the royal calendar. Um, and you're right, it is a really lovely photo of Charles, uh, King Charles, uh, I should say, looking a, a little bit teary as he it, landed I his just, first win. I'm, um, I'm a sucker for this, the idea of this soft King Charles. I know that there's like all these stories about his temper and everything but you know seeing him cry get emotional over this race i truly feel like it was about his mother and i i mean i, I that meant a lot to me as a royal watcher uh, really good to talk to you as always kinsey schofield and uh, there'll be another majesty podcast as well dropping this week on it's Spotify. Up. it's up it's, it's up. up it's up already I do, I do my work i do my work okay you, send a tweet love and tag me in with a link okay. and we will okay. uh, we will retweet it so that you can get it for your uh, pleasure on spotify uh, thank you kinsey schofield